I've just been job hunting and sleeping and actually finishing something in the rain on Netflix. I was actually introduced to Jung Hae in New York on October 17th. Ah! <laughs> yes, I am officially unemployed. Any hospitals there? Hiring? I'm your boy. Willing to do anything at this point. Need a job. Need to pay credit card bills. Need to pay my mom. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Christian and welcome back to my channel. If it is your first time here, welcome. And if you have been here, I welcome you back again. I know it's been, I believe, two months since my last video and I took you to a tour of my first ever nursing job as a per diem flu shot nurse. And within the past two months, so many things have happened and a lot of things have changed in my life. Specifically, one change. I'm so excited to tell you about. And if it is your first time here, let me introduce myself to you. I live in New York City and I started this channel, which is a journey of my last semester of nursing school until I finally graduated in the end of May, took my NCLEX on July 30th, finally found out that I passed the NCLEX exam, became a New York State registered nurse on August 1st. Great way to start the month and the rest of this year. And so yes, also the past two months, I've been engaging in my first job as a flu shot nurse, yet, my main goal was really to get a hospital job. And within this past few months, so many things have happened, so many details have occurred, so that I can finally tell you this great, dream fulfilling, and amazing news that I am finally a nurse in the hospital. <laughs> so like I said, I graduated nursing school on May 28th. And after graduation, I rested for two weeks, just watching my Korean dramas and staying at home. <laughs> Getting back all the sleep I have lost the past four years of nursing school. And after those two weeks, I started to micro-study for the NCLEX. Not too seriously, just here and there. And I had a vacation in Cali sometime in July. And after that trip, as I returned back to New York, I vehemently started studying for the NCLEX that was set on July 30th. But even before I took the NCLEX, at around June time, I was already applying to some hospitals through their online career websites. They get back to you, after a while. A while. <laughs> but anyways, around the end of June, before I left for Kelly, a talent recruiter from the hospital system that I am in now actually reached out to me on LinkedIn, which is this website where you create a professional profile and job recruiters can add you and message you if there's any job listings available and you can apply also straight from the website. I messaged me asking if I was interested in a full-time nursing position for a cardiothoracic surgery step-down unit. As interested as I was in cardiology ever since, I responded to that message and sent over my resume and actually had a 10-minute screening interview with the talent recruiter. I told her that I have not even taken my NCLEX yet, it will probably be in a month. She said it was fine, just reach out to me again when you pass your NCLEX and receive your license and I was like, noted. And so time came and I finally took my NCLEX and got my nursing license and reached out to her again and no response. I emailed her, I texted her, I emailed her again, and no response. So I said, that is okay. It was a month later, so I understood they were not gonna wait for me. They probably found someone else for the position. So, one opportunity that Fast forward to NCLEX day, which I told you about on the previous video, like I said. That afternoon after the NCLEX, I received an email that another hospital that I knew of had an open job fair the following day. Keep in mind that you receive your NCLEX scores of whether it's a pass or a fail 48 hours after the exam. And so for this job fair, it was a same day interview. And let me tell you, such an unexpected occurrence in this job fair. So in the lobby of the hospital, that's where you can fill up application forms and then you wait in the line of chairs in order where they bring you to another room where there's a circle of nurse managers who will interview you randomly depending on which order you are seated on. And so I was seated on the third chair and the first two chairs were empty. It was just a random choice of mine. I didn't want to be brought in right away. So I was like, hmm, maybe I'll wait for two more people to go in first. I wasn't in a rush anyways. And after a minute or so, two more people sat down the two chairs before me. Let me tell you why this is such an important part of the story. And so the first person went in, the second seated person was called in, and right as I was about to be called to go in, another nurse who was also being interviewed decided to cut the line and skip me. Well, and I said, it's okay, whatever. 
patience and understanding. So she was brought in and I was the fourth person to be called in. I went inside the room and my respective nurse manager was in front of me. And so she took my resume and she was reading my last name. She was like, hmm. And then she asked, do you know Georgie? And I said, that's my mom. And immediately she started tearing up and she said, I used to be your mom's nurse manager in her current hospital. So this nurse manager and my mom used to be very, very close when they were working together. And I have heard this nurse manager's name as they were very close. The nurse manager was telling me, I cannot believe the time has come where it's finally your turn to become a nurse. And she said, can you believe that of all the applicants that are here today, you are the one in front of me right now. That's why the incident I told you earlier was such a very important part of the story. This happened so perfectly, so randomly, and so coincidentally. If it is a coincidence, or who knows, it was really meant to be. And you know, this hospital was a really great prospect for me because it was just one bus straight down from my house. And the bus stop was right in front of my house as well. And so she said, you will find out the results in one week. And one week passed. And nothing. And two weeks. And three weeks. And nothing. So this was July 31st, and I didn't hear from anybody. And at the end of August, the hospital finally emails me saying thank you for showing up to our job fair, but we could not offer an open position for you. But we do want a second interview sometime in September. And it was the third week of September and there was still no email about a second interview. In fact, I even emailed them asking about the update and no reply in return. And finally said another opportunity. Down. And so throughout August, while I was waiting for this hospital to email me somehow, I decided to talk to my mom and tell her, why don't I try in your hospital? So my mom's hospital, which she has been at for almost 30 years, is around two blocks away from our house. Talk about efficiency and convenience. I can save up on transportation, on food, just run home. She was able to talk to the nurse manager of the heart telemetry unit, which used to be her unit manager when she was working in step down, I believe in her first five years of working there. So I was able to get an interview in August 13. And so the unit manager finally came, asked me some general behavioral interview questions. What's your strength and weaknesses? What does nursing care mean to you? If you have a conflict with a co-member, what would you do? But then he called in another unit manager. And for the next 20 minutes, they drilled me, drilled me with clinical questions. And, and I, oh! If you came to the unit and you saw your patient unconscious on the floor, or if you come to the unit and you see your patient dysnic, what would you do? So for the unconscious situation, I said, no, oh, I'd go to the patient, check if they are pulseless, if they are breathless, and if so, I'd start CPR. And then they drilled me with CPR. What's the compression rate for one person, for two people? What's the depth of compressions? Where's the exact location of their chest where you should compress? And I, and I oh! And so the interview ended, trembling with fear, but I know I answered them correctly. He said, call back, you'll hear from me tomorrow. I called back the next day, and another opportunity down. <laughs> that decision really hit me because in my mind, it was already ingrained. Wow, the convenience of the efficiency, which is so close to our house. But then, I guess it wasn't really meant to be. And so we move on and keep going because Life never stops for anybody, not even a rejection. <laughs> Throughout August, I kept applying to different career websites of different hospital systems on the computer. It is really hard to apply online. There's so many steps to really land an interview. First, talent acquisition agents need to see your application and your resumes. Then they look over it to see if you're a fit. Then they pass it over to a hiring manager. Then they will check if you are fit for this. Then they type in the unit manager if they want to continue with you and even look for it. Then they call you if, you want an interview, if they want to interview you. Then you get an interview. Then you get a... <laughs> It was a lot. Honestly, applying to online portals, I just applied just to apply, just to make myself feel like I'm doing something. But for the most part, I really was not expecting anything. Anyways, around third week of September, I met up my nursing classmate, Julia. She told me, why don't you reach out to the doctors who you used to work for during nursing school? Yes, during sophomore and junior years of nursing school, I worked in an outpatient interventional cardiology clinic. I worked alongside two doctors as 
their personal medical assistants and they really develop a great relationship not just with the doctors and the company clinic as a whole and so i emailed the two cardiologists with a long essay i am shamelessly asking you if you could help me find a job because I knew that they do rounds in a certain hospital system, which is actually the hospital system that I talked very first about. And so the two doctors kindly replied to me and said, come to the office next week. Let's have a sit down and talk about what you want so we can help you out. Anyways, the head cardiologist called the director of nursing of that hospital system in front of me and said, get Christian an interview as soon as possible. And so I found out that that doctor is actually the medical director of the cardiology department of that hospital. Anyways, it's been almost about a month and there was still no call about an interview for that hospital. Just so happens that around the first week of October, I had a friend who was visiting from the Philippines. She's part of a corporate agency to sell condominiums and housings in the Philippines to foreign individuals. And my friend, Mikey, was back in New York for the winter. She messaged me around October 1st saying, what nursing position are you interested in? And I said, at this point, I am open to anything. Why? And Mikey said that she met someone in Jollibee who was a nurse and she happened to tell this new client of hers that she has a friend who was a new graduate nurse and was looking for a job. And so Mikey introduced me through text to this nurse who was able to get me an interview in her unit. You know, what are the chances that Mikey is in Jollibee trying to find clients and they were a nurse and that nurse is looking for a new nurse. And it's just crazy with how things just happen in life. So I had an interview on October 4th. There's a city hospital which is actually three blocks away from my nursing school. The interview went really well and the nurse manager interviewed me said I will know by next week of her decision. Next week came and <laughs> nothing. So another opportunity found. This time I was still waiting for the interview for the hospital that the two cardiologists vouched me for. And so around mid-October, I received an email for one of the hospitals in the hospital system that the two cardiologists were in. So this hospital system has nine different hospitals all across New York City. And so one of the hospital branches, which is not the one that the cardiologist vouched me for, reached out to me through email asking if I was open for an interview for their new med surge slash telemetry unit that was set to open around the end of December. And so I went to the interview. I was on October 8th on a Tuesday and the interview went really well and they said you will know very soon of our decision. And right after the interview, I received another email, this time from the hospital branch that the doctors vouched me for the following day, which is October 9th, a Wednesday. So I went to the interview the following day for a cardiac step-down unit, and the interview went also really well. In fact, the nurse manager toured me around the unit that same day. It seemed like a very acute unit, telemetry, EKG monitors all across the boards. Quite intimidating, but I was ready for it. Cardiology has always been one of my interests. I knew if I was going to be a hospital nurse, I wanted to be a cardiac unit. That Wednesday, after the interview for that hospital branch, I received a call from the talent manager of the hospital branch interview from yesterday. And so she said that your interview yesterday had a positive review and we will let you know tomorrow if it is a final yay or a nay. And so, tomorrow came. That was October 10th, a Thursday. I received a call from the first hospital branch and they said, we are offering you a position in our med search and telemetry unit. Yay! And they also said that I had 24 hours to officially accept or decline the invitation. And guess what? Right after that offer of opportunity call, I received two more calls. One from the city hospital from two weeks ago. But my friend referred me to the nurse she met in Jollibee and had an interview for. They also offered me a full-time position in their med search unit and also the hospital that I interviewed for on July 31st where the chair situation and the nurse manager happened to be my mom's former nurse manager who she was close with. They offered me a full-time intensive care unit ICU position. So within the span of 30 minutes, I received three offer of employment. And after the third call, I was like, I 
don't know what to do anymore. And just to think a month or two before the situation, I was so anxious if I was even gonna get a job. And even though, as grateful as I was, for these three employment offers, I was sure of one thing, that I had to wait for the decision of the cardiac step-down unit. One, because it was a cardiac step-down unit. So in the cardiac step-down unit, you take care of patients who just came from open-heart surgeries, electrophysiology, cath procedures, cardiac intensive care units, and I knew that that was what I wanted to do. As hard as it was to make decisions, as grateful as I was for the city hospital that my friend referred me to from Jollibee, and also to my mom's former nurse manager for being so kind, I knew of one thing that I had to choose in between those two hospital systems, which were my last two interviews on October 8th and October 9th. Just practicality wise, yes for the name, also for the opportunities and the benefits that I knew that they offered. And so that same day I turned down the city hospital as well as the other hospitals ICU offer. And I was left with a hospital system branches med surge slash telemetry unit. And I told them, is it okay if I use my 24 hours to decide because I am waiting on your other branches employment offer? <laughs> so it just so happens that these two hospital branches were twin companies. And so that first hospital branch said, because we are twin companies, you have to reject one to get the answer of the other hospital branch. Now, and I, oh, And so the talent manager of hospital branch A told me that I will give you until 3 p.m. tomorrow to give me a decision for this employment offer. And I was like, okay. And I said, okay, thank you. And so tomorrow came and around 12 p.m., three hours from crunch time, I received a call from the talent manager of hospital branch B for the cardiac step down unit. And she said, your interview was positive, but we will let you know on Monday if it is a final yay or nay because it was a Friday and we would need a business day to draft an employment offer. And so at that point, I knew I had to make a decision. To actually even hear Cardiac Step Down's decision on Monday, I had to first turn down Hospital A's offer because they were twin companies. And so I was left with the decision where it was so hard because one, with Hospital A on the line, I already had a job. It was a situation that was already secure. And if I let this go and turn it down for the sake of Hospital B, if Hospital B doesn't even give me a final yay, I just lost my employment opportunity in general. I am back to zero. And so such a dilemma in my heart. I knew that I wanted cardiac step down and that I would regret it not even knowing their decision. I think at that moment, I was in a state of mind where even though I was so grateful to even been offered a job, knowing that it is hard for a new grad to even get a job in general in the first place, I knew that if I was going to get a job, it must be something that I am really passionate in. I think at that Point, I told myself that I would rather know the decision on Monday it be a rejection than taking hospital ace opportunity at not knowing at all for the rest of my life with the potentiality that I was accepted in hospital B. And with a heavy and torn heart, I turned down hospital A's employment offer. I really took a leap of faith in that decision based solely in the belief that I had to pursue something that I was really passionate and interested in. Finally, Monday came. I was in a flu shot job venue and I received a call from Hospital B at 11 a.m. and they told me that I got the job! Yay! Yay! So with such a happy heart, even before the talent manager finished the sentence, I said, yes, I am willing. I will accept the offer. Five minutes later after the call, she emails me the official offer of employment letter and the next steps through the onboarding process. And here I am now. It's been actually three weeks since I started this job and I am loving it. It's just crazy that the same hospital system that first reached out to me and ghosted me 
is the same hospital system that I'm now working at, which is actually the same unit that they offered me for, just in a different hospital branch. And just a recollection of the rejections that I received and the offer of employments I received and the amazing stories in between of coincidental events. I just want to encourage you, telling you that no matter how many rejections you have received or are receiving, to just keep on going, keep doing what you want to do and what you love to do. And you know that will make you happy and it will give you purpose and fulfillment in this life. I firmly believe after everything I have been through in this application and job hunting process that what's meant for you is yours and will be yours. Throughout many points in the stories I have told you I thought that this is it or this is it, this is what's meant to be. But honestly you just never know until you are really faced and given with what is meant for you. So never give up and keep going after the things that you really want to do in this lifetime. Thank you to everyone who have been showing and granting me support, whether it's my family, friends, other loved ones, even the people who I personally do not know who messages me on Instagram, telling me their own stories and asking for advices and telling me that they have given them some sort of direction in their nursing process. I am humbled and I am grateful. And shout out to the four nurses that I have met in my orientation at our new jobs who left me because they are in another hospital branch. To Christine, Kathleen, Desmond, and Kimmy, this whole process would have not been as easy and memorable as it had been without them. Thank you for joining me in this journey. Like I always say, this is really just the beginning. Each step of the way, it's really just the beginning because there's really no end in your endeavors and pursuits in this life. And hopefully my next video is me taking you into my daily life as your newest cardiac nurse. Thank you everyone.